In today's episode, we have the latest updates on the standard range Model 3 with innovations in its battery pack. Tesla's been conducting upgrades on the Model 3 standard range to include their LFP battery pack, the very same battery used to power the Chinese version of the car for the whole past year. Elon already guaranteed that with the first edition of Model 3, there won't be any high-end new tech stuff. It'll just be an excellent and safe EV with a fantastic range for the money. But let's see what's in it for the next generation. Hey everyone and welcome to Tesla News, where we bring you the newest and best updates about Tesla and Elon Musk. For daily videos, please consider subscribing to our channel and don't forget to join our Discord server to discuss future topics. Let's get back to where we were. Yeah, talking about the battery pack. Tesla had announced to their North American consumers who were waiting for the delivery of their Model 3 Standard Range Plus cars that they could get their hands on earlier than the expected delivery date. And they'd be fetching the same battery pack which was set up along the cars released in Asia and Europe. Battery technology is evolutionary rather than revolutionary. It's improved quite a bit in the last 10 years and will continue at a similar pace, perhaps a bit faster for the next 10 years. There's a lot of fascinating battery technology in the lab, but getting that to the market takes a period of time and money. Some of Tesla's battery patents would demonstrate some of this new technology will come to demand in the next couple of years, but a new automated battery plant will have to be built to make them. Musk needs some longer range, high capacity batteries for his semi trucks, so I suspect they will arrive for them first. The Model 3 standard range is configured like most other cars to encourage customers to upgrade with options and accessories, and Tesla doesn't expect to sell many without upgrades, which makes it more profitable. Still, it comes equipped with a very respectable variety of features. That's about sales and stuff, let's get into the exciting part. Yep, the cosmetic changes that we get along with the new variant. The prominent new feature is increased range, acceleration, and energy efficiency. The heat pump for cabin heating incorporating the famous octo valve will also increase the capacity and efficiency in winter. New wheels, double paned windows which reduce noise, heated steering wheel, powered trunk lid. The center console has been redesigned and has a matte finish instead of shiny plastic. It won't show dust as quickly. The USB storage module for the Sentry Mode video has been moved from the center console into the glove box where it can be locked. Also, limitless supercharging will not be included in the $35,000 version. Maybe they might offer a 20x supercharging limit for those who really want to use those once every summer for holidays. So, people can travel 4,000 miles each year on superchargers. They will try to minimize part number like most other manufacturers, so same ABS slash ESP system, same PTC heater, maybe only one instead of two like Model S slash X, same 10kW charger on board, 11kW three-phase version for other markets, same camera, same rain sensor. Tesla cars are unique because they improve with age. New over-the-air software updates improve performance and add features. So what follows largely applies to cars delivered in December of 2017, just as well as cars produced today. And these are just the ones that come to mind. I'm gonna give you a very long list of improvements if you really wanna know what they've been hauling all this time in their garages. Braking's been improved through software updates. Acceleration's faster, energy efficiency's improved, handling's improved for performance models, range is increased. A raft of classic games has been added, including classic Atari games, Stardew Valley, Beach Buggy Racing 2, Chess, Backgammon, and Cuphead. Support for an Xbox controller, integrated dash cam, sentry mode anti-theft and vandalism feature, Joe mode, dog mode, romance mode, Patsy mode, emissions testing, fart mode, and camper mode. Regenerative braking hold mode, neural network automatic wiper control, stop sign and traffic light warning, recognition and visualization of traffic cones and accessible parking spaces, enhanced driverless summons and even more enhanced summon. Navigate on autopilot, automatic lane changes to follow the route, pass slower cars, merge onto freeways and take freeway exits. Visualization of traffic lights, 10 times faster self-driving computer, emergency lane departure avoidance, Tesla theater, which includes Hulu, YouTube, and Netflix, improved web browser with video support, music synthesizer app, Sketchpad app, remote activation of HomeLink, open your garage door, 
schedule service with phone app. Raise and lower windows remotely. 100 voice commands. Touchscreen visualization of the car and roadways improved, including pinch zoom and rotation. Reorganization of the touchscreen, including more convenient placement of navigation directions and an application launch bar. Some relevant information has been moved to be closer to the driver's side. Faster charging. Max increased from 120 kW to 250 kW. Automatic battery preconditioning to optimize battery temperature for faster charging when approaching a Tesla supercharger under navigation. I'm feeling lucky and I feel hungry suggestions were added to the navigation system. Now, let's look into the accurate costing of Model 3. As of yesterday, you can order a Model 3 for $45,000, not including incentives which, on the surface, still seem high compared to a Honda Accord or Toyota Camry. But if you look at the expense of acquiring the car over 10 or 15 years, the Tesla is a better financial decision. Now, keep in mind that the Tesla has features you can't get in either of these cars, but ignoring that, let's compare the V6 Camry to the Model 3. You'll fork over $10,000 more for the Tesla delivery, but let's compare the cost of operating each. If a person pays about $0.08 cents per kilowatt hour for overnight charging and gets about 4 miles per kilowatt hour, so 150,000 miles over 10 years will cost me $3,300. That difference independently envisions for the higher purchase price of the Model 3, even bought on credit. We haven't yet accounted for the lower cost of maintenance for the Tesla, or the lower cost of repairs excluding auto body repairs. Insurance will be somewhat higher for Tesla, but not enough to change the bottom line conclusion. The Tesla Model 3 is a great buy, not even counting the value of driving the safest car on the road. Now let's take up an interesting topic. Do you think that your Tesla could pick you up on its own or deliver itself? Drop your visions on this in the comment section below because we would love to hear from you all. From my point of view, yeah, it could take several years, but that would be consistent with the vision for the full capabilities. Tesla is wise to make ongoing improvements in the real world, with valuable sub-features. Autopilot and enhanced autopilot are already functional. They help me save time every week. The next major upgrade will be Smart Summon that's been teased as part of the V10 software update. This will add the ability to tap a button in the app to have it drive to you from a parking lot. Smart Summon's taken several months longer than initially anticipated to build and refine, which shows just how challenging the ability for a car to self-drive will be. That's about it for today. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more content just like this one. And while you're at it, turn on post notifications so that you never miss out on any of our future uploads. Drop a like for the video if you're a huge fan of what Tesla's doing in the automotive industry. That's about it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll meet again in the next one. In the next one.